The American Italian Cultural Center and Museum on South Peters in New Orleans offers event venue space, Italian language classes, dual citizenship and translation services, seminars, genealogy, and trips to Italy. Ciao! AmericanItalianCulturalCenter.com This program is brought to you in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support education, the arts, and culture in the greater New Orleans area. Scott Laborde and welcome to Steppin' Out with updates from the local restaurant arts and entertainment scenes. Joining me, Poppy Tooker, host of Louisiana Eats on WWNO Radio. Hey, Miss Poppy, in that wonderful red jacket, kiddo. Hey. Okay. <laughs> Gwen Tompkins, we're so glad she's back, host of the radio show Music Inside Out. Good to see you, Miss Gwen. Thanks Hello. For Thank you. Alan Smazin, speaking of being back, it's been a while, editor of the <laughs> Crescent City Jewish News and TheaterCriticism.com. And since pre COVID days, Stephen Maitland Lewis, we're so glad to see him. He has a brand new mystery thriller out and a wonderful story about Louis Armstrong right in time for Satchmo Summerfest. Welcome back. Thank Stephen. you. And Poppy, 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 some special meal deals. Oh, it's that favorite time of year. It's culinary now through August the 31st. <laughs> and of course that means the standard is two courses for 25 or less at lunch, $50 for dinner and brunch. It is a daunting task to work that website these days. There's 110 restaurants participating. It's more like, who's not? But the bargains are incredible. And Antoine's is, has a really great bargain. They have, for brunch, a two-course deal for $24. And then that's on Friday and Saturday. And on Sunday, when there's a jazz brunch, Three courses for $35, $18 adds bottomless mimosas. I mean, this is just a great time. And what do I have to say about that? <gasps> Vicious <Vichyssoir>. What? <laughs> what? Oh, my favorite. He's still my heart. And now we're going to take a little trip around town because, and we're going to mention some places we haven't talked about or thought of in a while. How about Baru? Take a trip to South America right there on Magazine Street with tuna tostado, chorizo empanadas, there's grilled octopus. It's a beautiful mem menu. And Tito's, the Peruvian restaurant, Tito's, they have two locations now. Of course, their original location is on Magazine Street, and now they're new on the corner of St. Charles and Melpamine. And we're talking ceviche, pisco, and so much more. If you have not yet been to Tito's new place, you're gonna love sitting in that sunny dining room looking out at, as the streetcars pass. Now, Gotro's, unusual to see them, Three courses, $50 for dinner, and it was delicious, huh, Alan? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we can go out to the lakefront. There's Sala out there on Lake Marina Avenue, $46 for three courses. Their menus are beautiful, but there's so many other great choices. Under $30, Bashery in the quarter. Johnny Sanchez, dinner, two courses, $25, three courses, $32. But if you want to talk about a really great bargain, yes, King Brasserie, which is new downtown just off Poydras Street. They're actually next door to um, La Compere Rouge. King Brasserie has a three-course dinner for $39. It is a charming dining room, and I would just like to point out that, of course, that Peacock Lounge oh, where Robin so Barnes sing is, is right next door. Oh. And so all during dinner, you can hear Robin Barnes singing in the <laughs> background. It's fabulous. And the chef, Samuel Perry, and the pastry chef, Lana Talley, they are so talented. I have to tell you, have the bread service, something I really would recommend. 
You're missing it if you don't. Oh, what Lana is doing with bread and all the accoutrement. Now, the menu is very French Mediterranean, so you're going to see dishes like this octopus. Mm. There's crawfish beignets, and I kind of thought, eh, crawfish beignets. I never tasted crawfish beignets quite as delicious as these are. There's bouillabaisse, a beautiful bouillabaisse. This is the king carbonara. Don't miss this dish. It's a carbonara that includes sea urchin. It has batarga in it. It has truffles. It's beautiful. And that's sort of the message I really wanted to share with you all is that it seems like this particular restaurant chain has funded these chefs extraordinarily when it comes to ingredients. And the ingredients are incredible. There is, that, look at that bouillabaisse. There is a caramel torte that's filled with a chocolate custard. It's divine. Now, some place that you're not gonna find culinary at all. You know, Sophina Young has a lot of fun at Mr. Mao. And now she's inviting some of her very diverse chef buddies. She's a big presence in the hospitality industry to host what she's calling Little Mao Barbecue Mondays. And it's an international choice. It's every Monday throughout the month of August. You get to go to Mexico. She's cooking a dinner with Kin's Hugh Tan. Everybody loved Kin. It's rare to eat his food now. Prince Lobo's going to be in for an Ethiopian barbecue. And this doesn't sound very international, but Nathan Barfield from Turkey and the Wolf will be joining them at the end to have a little barbecue from Alabama. <laughs> so she's doing really fun things. There is no culinary at Mr. Mal, but boy, is there delicious fun. All right. Thank you so much, Poppy. And Gwen, what a weekend. Satchmo Summerfest. Yes. His birthday is actually tomorrow, uh, August the 4th, we, as we right. know, thanks to Tad Jones, our wonderful, uh, very missed researcher. But tell us about that weekend. Well, I tell you, it's, uh, I think it's going to be wonderful this year. Um, it's also going to be free this year, uh, Satchmo Fest. So there's no excuse not to go if you're around. Um, all of the events are going to be happening, with the exception of one, at the Jazz Museum compound, the old on Esplanade and Barrack Street, and many of the events are going to be streamed, actually, on uh, the New Orleans Jazz Museum's channel on YouTube. So stream if you can't make it, but if you can make it, make it. Uh, so on Saturday, uh, August 5th, the, the event is going to kick off, as all great festivals should kick off, with the, uh, with the roots of music. This is just a wonderful young mm -hmm. band, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I mean, it's a way to see sort of young people shine. These are the musicians of today. They're going to be the musicians of tomorrow. And it sort of makes you proud as a New Orleanian to hear this mighty sound that comes out of them. And that's going to happen at 1130 on Saturday on the Esplanade side of the Jazz Museum compound. Um, you're going to hear a mighty sound. Sound, you're, and, and who knows, you're, it's, um, this may be an opportunity to see the next Louis Armstrong. <laughs> um, also, the Shotgun Brass Band, they're going to be performing on Saturday from noon till 1.10 p.m. That's going to be at the Eugene and um, Joseph Jones Family Foundation stage at the compound of the Jazz Museum. That's Marla Dixon's band. She's a wonderful trumpet player, and she surrounds herself with these really um, seasoned tra uh, traditional jazz players, and it's going to be great from noon till till 1.10 on the Jones stage on Saturday. Aside from music, Satchmo Fest is the city's one chance each year to see Ricky Riccardi um, in action. You know, this guy is just wonderful. He's the head of research collections at the Louis, and Louis Armstrong House Museum up in Corona, Queens, and he's now written three biographies of Armstrong. The latest is going to be published very soon, and the latest is Armstrong at his youngest here in New Orleans and also in Chicago. Um, Ricky Riccardi, of course, won a Grammy Award last year for um, his liner notes on a sort of a multi-album set of Armstrong's work on RCA Victor, and that was uh, uh, released by Mosaic Records. Records, and I think Arm, uh, you know Ricky Riccardi may know about more about Armstrong than Armstrong knew about himself. <laughs> so he's going to be appearing in a lot of different uh, presentations. The first one being with the award-winning author Maxine Gordon, who you might remember as uh, the woman who uh, wrote this wonderful biography of her of her uh, husband, uh, the late tenor sax player and band leader Dexter Gordon. Mm -hmm. And they have been researching Velma Middleton, who was a wonderful front woman for the All Star 
Stars Band, and she was a longtime friend of Armstrong's. She was a great comedic talent. She was a good singer who never got her due, really. And uh, when um, Louis Armstrong married his fourth wife, Lucille Wilson, they did it at Velma Middleton's house. I mean, that's how close they were. And when you listen to the reel-to-reel -reel recordings at uh, the Armstrong Museum, Velma Middleton is all over them. So she's just a wonderful woman. And unfortunately, she passed away uh, she died during a, um, a tour of Africa in 1961. And uh, if the All-Stars had any complaint against Armstrong, it's for uh, what transpired during that uh, period in their lives. So it's going to be a wonderful presentation. Ricky Riccardi, Maxine Gordon, Velma Middleton, the final tour. It's going to be on the third floor of the New Orleans uh, Jazz Museum at the Satchmo Legacy uh, stage, which of course is And on to King to Oliver. Perry. We can't forget King Oh, Oliver. absolutely. On Saturday, this is going to round out Saturday. It's going to be Ricky Riccardi and his presentation um, on the 100th anniversary of the uh, recording of some of King Oliver's best Rec uh, best songs. And uh, this is King Oliver's Creole Jazz Band. This is the band that lured Armstrong out of New Orleans permanently. And it is um, extraordinary. And uh, and the one thing about Riccardi is that he always brings wonderful audio visuals um, for his presentations. So you're going to be able to see and hear things probably that you've never seen or heard before. Also, that's going to be at the Satchmo Legacy stage from 4 until 5 p.m. on Saturday. Now, the Jazz Museum is also going to be mounting its own exhibit of uh, marking this uh, centennial of King Oliver's uh, recordings, and that's going to include Johnny Dodds' clarinet, um, as well as um, as a slide whistle that was owned by his brother Baby Dodds, the drummer, and played by Louis Armstrong on um, uh, on a song called Sobbin' Blues, who the Oliver people might know. So the next St. Augustine, yes, featured, on Sunday. Huh? That's right. There's going to be a uh, jazz mass. It's going to feature the Treme Brass Band. It's going to be at St. Augustine Church. That's on Governor Nichols Street in Treme, and the mass is going to begin at 10. If you can't make the mass, then um, it's going to be on Facebook. Uh, the Facebook.com St. Um, St. Aug Church um, site, and there's going to be a second line afterwards. Now, then we're going to um, be able to get back to the compound, actually, of the New Orleans Jazz Museum. We're going to see John Boutte perform. Uh, he's always must-see entertainment, and that's going to be followed by, um, inside the museum, Robert Catalliotti. He's going to present Whip Them Cymbals Pops, New Orleans's pioneering drummers, Baby Dodds, Zudi Singleton, and Paul Barbaran. Drums are what define jazz, and uh, and you know Cagliotti did a wonderful book actually called Drumsville um, recently that's just worth reading, and his presentation is going to be fabulous. Then we get back to Ricky Riccardi, and he's going to end <laughs> the lecture series, and he's going to end it with a year in the life of Louis Armstrong, 1933. This was an extraordinarily pivotal time in Armstrong's life. He recorded with Oliver, of course. He went to Europe. If you've ever seen on YouTube his performance of Dinah with his uh, with his orchestra. Um, in Scandinavia, uh, you will be um, reborn. It is a fantastic uh, film. And his chops and his charm just electrify the audience, and they still electrify us 100 years later. So try, if you can, to see uh, Ricky Riccardi end this lecture series. It's going to end at 4 o'clock, um, and his lecture will be between 4 and 5 o'clock on Sunday at the Satchmo Legacy stage, which is, of course, dedicated to Joni Berry. Yes. Um, wrapping up the music weekend will be the original Pinette's uh, brass band, because they're wonderful, and because the next Louis Armstrong will likely be a woman. So why not, uh, <laughs> so why not go and see them from oh, 620 okay. until well, great. 750. And as you said, it's all free, and more details, SatchmoSummerFest.org. That was quite a job. Thank you very much, Gwen. No woo, woo. And moving over to Stephen. And Stephen, we should we would be remiss if we didn't point out that the Satchmo Legacy stage is in memory of your dear wife, Joni Berry. So you, we kept seeing that name, and we know that, and we remember her fondly too. Thank you. And Thank I you. love the fact that um, you live in New Orleans, part uh, very much of the time, and in California. But you're here because you're very involved with Satchmo Fest, but also you have a memory. Would you please share? With with the man himself. Of course, I'd be delighted to. It's, it's something that's very special to me and I love sharing it. Um, I was a fan of Louis from about the age of eight. And I was very fortunate in the, within the household, growing up in England, everyone was interested in music. Some with different musicians. I was the, the Louis guy. My father was the uh, Fats Waller guy. My mother was 
everybody's. <laughs> <laughs> and um, my brother, I, I don't really call him having any favorites. But anyway, at the age of about eight or nine, I really listened very closely to Louis Armstrong. He was very special. And when I was about 13, I read in Melody Maker, which was a weekly musical journal which I used to subscribe to, that he was coming to England. And I wrote him a letter to his hotel. And it was a childish letter, really. I mean, it was in my scribbly writing, but I tried my best. But there were a few mistakes which were crossed out. And four weeks later, I got a four-page handwritten letter back from Louis Armstrong. Four pages in his own handwriting, <sighs> written whilst he was on tour. And he, it was mailed to me from Holland. And then I wrote with great excitement to thank him for his letter. Then he wrote back to me to thank <laughs> me for writing him. <laughs> and thus started uh, a pen pal relationship. And um, it was augmented with Christmas cards and birthday cards and oh. diet suggestions and, and the like. <laughs> and um, then he came to England, appeared at the Royal Festival Hall, and I wrote again. And I put my telephone number and Lucille Armstrong called me <laughs> and invited me for lunch on the day of the concert at the Royal Festival Hall. And I had tickets for the 6.15 performance and for the 7.30 performance, and I'd have had tickets if it was a 24-hour concert. <laughs> and um, I went to the Mayfair Hotel in London, and I called uh, from the lobby their, their suite. She'd obviously given instructions to the switchboard to put me through, and um, she said, come up. So I took the elevator, and I'll never forget stepping out of the elevator around 1 o'clock, 1.30 lunchtime, and walking towards their suite and hearing him tootle. <laughs> uh, 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 it, it, was, it was very emotional. Mm. And then he opened the door, and there he was, Satchmo. Uh. <laughs> and um, it was... A wonderful experience. Well, and I want to do, if you don't mind, I need to fast forward just a little bit just to say that years later, you find these letters, and where do you see these letters again? Okay, years later, when I moved to the States, I joined the board of the Louis Armstrong House Museum, and I arrived for a board meeting in early in New York. I arrived early, and the then executive director, Michael Cogswell, said, Stephen, you're a bit early, but we've left a manila file on the table in the conference room. Take a look at it. We'll be with you in a minute. So I went in and sat down in this room. I was the only one in the room. And there's the file. And I opened it up. And there were my letters <laughs> that I'd written to him. And, uh, and, and I, I, when I repeat, when I come to that line, I get a bit sort yeah. of emotional. Well, it just, uh, you know, and I'm sorry we have to Thank kind you. of scoot along, but we definitely wanted to mention that you are very busy these days, uh, formerly, well, an, well, an attorney and former investment banker, but you've been writing these thrillers over the years, and this is the latest. Congratulations. Thank Legacy you. Legacy of Atonement. And you can go to MaitlandLewis.com for all the details and some of the past books. But um, it's really a delight, and I was honored enough to do a book blurb. Well, I thank love you. the book so much. And it's available at all local bookstores and, of course, Amazon and all, all that good stuff, too. But you're a, you're a very versatile gentleman, sir. I, I keep going. I keep going. <laughs> I'm so glad. And thank you for being with us. <laughs> thank you. Because it's been a while. Thank too. you. Yes. And on to Alan. All right, Peggy. I've returned triumphantly from the Boy Scouts <laughs> National Jamboree. I have the sore feet and the insect bites to prove it, in case you want to check. I made it back in town last weekend and drove more than eight hours to see the final evening performance of the spectacular Oliver at Summer Lyric Theater. And among the outstanding cast, of course, was John Grimsley as Fagin. Here we see the original Dog and Pony show. There she is, oh. Diana Shortez, <laughs> and she was reunited with John Grimsley, uh, you know, after the show. Uh, it was directed by Sean Patterson with fantastic choreography by Jeanne Buisson. Uh, this show was a great turn, by the way, for Jesse Tom uh, Terrebonne Thompson, who played Nancy. I'd also give a shout-out to the youngsters. All 
of them are great. The, uh, the Oliver, the Artful Dodger, and another one, Finian, who just happened to be Sean's son, was also in the oh, cast. Oh. So there you have it. Now, Tuesday night, Peggy, I was in very good company as Banu Gibson, Blake Kohili, and I were selected to be the judges for the fourth week of Stage Door Idol competition. Now, one of last year's finalists selected by Wildcard was Jessica Mixon, who did a fabulous version of Billie Holiday's Mean to Me. Very slow. But after uh, 10 people were all heard, all of whom were very good, the week's best was determined to be Stephanie Arbery with a spectacular rendering of I've Got My Love to Keep Me Warm. Well, then the names of those who got a judge's vote were placed in the hat, held by Erica Jensen there on the left with MC Jimmy Murphy as Stephanie watched. And lo and behold, for the second year in a row, Jessica Mixon is in the finals as the wild card. And uh, they, of course, they congratulated each other. So now you've got the finals now set. Stephanie Aubrey and Jessica Mixon will face week one winner Noah Lanier, week two winner Gabrielle Trace, and week three co-winners Marco Bear and the Fleur de Lis Quartet who are always in it, it seems like. Unlike past years, though, Peg, the World War II Museum has already begun to sell advanced tickets for the finals, and I want to encourage everybody to get their tickets now. The actual link is so long, Peggy, you would have a fit. So I've, I've shortened it to a tiny URL. It's tinyurl.com slash 4E66JJ98. Uh, go to the World it's not so bad. Museum uh, TinyURL.com <laughs> 4E66JJ98. Uh, okay. Take a picture of it and use that one. Yeah. All right. All right. Last week, Tennessee Williams Theater Company opened their first rendition of Sweet Bird of Youth by Tennessee Williams to packed houses at the Low Depths Theater. I'll be reviewing it, of course, for next week. Rachel Whitman Groves led, led the cast as Alexandra DeLago, the Princess Cosmonopolis, a fading film actress who's accompanied by Chance Wayne, who who was played by Santo Panzarella, the male lead. He's returning to St. Cloud, Mississippi under much suspicion. The production, by the way, is directed by Doug Spearman. Check it out again. That's at the Lower Depth Theater, Loyola University. And it's extended now, Peggy, until August the 19th. And then opening tomorrow night at the New Orleans Jazz Market is the musical version of The Bodyguard. That's exciting. Yes, the movie, of course, that starred Whitney Houston and Kevin Costner. The movie of the same title. Now they have newcomer Asada Renee, who's in the center there, plays superstar Rachel Marin, and Jake Win Wilson plays former Secret Service agent Frank Farmer. And this production mar marks Anthony Bean's 50th anniversary of bringing black theater to New Orleans. It's on Aretha Castle, Haley Boulevard. You'll check it out again. Again, I hope everybody gets a chance to see that. It's going to be wonderful, I'm sure. All right. Thank you so much, Alan. And time for picks. Poppy. Well, down here on the so South Shore, we have culinary. But my pick is check out Tammany Taste of Summer on the North Shore, going on now through the 31st, and we'll be talking more about that next week. All right, Quinn. Uh, Jack Bradley took more pictures of Armstrong than anyone, and uh, his friend Michael Persico has put together a wonderful film and presentation on those photographs. Some of those photographs include Miles Davis uh, with Fats. Look and, at Guy Lombardo. Not with Fats, but with too. Lewis and Guy Lombardo, <laughs> exactly. Fans of, uh, of Satchmo. Uh -huh. And uh, that presentation is going to be at the Satchmo Legacy stage, um, and it's going to happen at uh, Sunday yeah. at, from 3 until 3.45. It's a wonderful opportunity to sit and reflect on how much this man has affected all of our lives. Absolutely. Alan? Well, written by Louisianian uh, Robert Harling in 1987, Steel Magnolias was a major motion picture. It starred Julia Roberts, Dolly Parton, Sally Fields, Olympia Dukakis, and Shirley MacLaine. You can see JPS is presenting it again tomorrow night at the Teatro Wigo facility with movie poster archives on hand in the lobby, showing and selling memorabilia from that film. Check it out at 6.30. See the film at 7, 8.00 dollars a person. All right. And Stephen, you're coming back in the fall. I'm for... coming back in November for an event here at the library. Uh -huh. And just to be in New Orleans <laughs> is a job. Uh, the Ladder <laughs> Library, November the 2nd. We look forward to seeing you again, you. of course. And now my picks. Just a few tickets left for Chef Kevin Belton's tailgate cooking demo and lunch at 11.30 a.m. on Saturday right here at WYS. Go to WYS.org slash events. Then, also here, we've got an Italian-American film festival that will take place starting at 3 p.m. with a reception and at, then at 4 o'clock the showing of four 30-minute sequences of films, beginning with one focusing on the 1890 murder in New Orleans of New Orleans Police Chief David Hennessy. Go to eventbrite.com for details on that, too. Also on Saturday at noon at the Barnes & Noble on Veterans, 
Writer Ramon Antonio Vargas will sign his new book called Family, Gangsters, and Champions, Boxer Tony Canzanari's Life and World. Mm. Congratulations on that. From that. And then from two to four, Errol and I will be signing our <laughs> books. And then next from four to six p.m., cookbook author and pal Kit Wall will sign her New Orleans classic cookbook series, all part of the 27th anniversary celebrating the bookstore on Veterans, Barnes & Noble. Don't forget White Linen Night from 5 to 10 p.m. Saturday in the 300 to 500 blocks of Julia and the 500 block of St. Joseph Street. Uh, that's right around the corner. Thank you all so very much. And, whew, that was a lot. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Good night. Good night. Bye -bye. See you at the theater. Okay. The American Italian Cultural Center and Museum on South Peters in New Orleans offers event venue space, Italian language classes, dual citizenship and translation services, seminars, genealogy, and trips to Italy. Ciao! AmericanItalianCulturalCenter.com This program is brought to you in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support education, the arts, and culture in the greater New Orleans area.